Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm thrilled to have you here just as always, and I've got what looks like it's gonna be a pretty cool padlock to take a look at. And uh, before you guys have the big heart attack, go ahead and sit down. Yeah, the lock that I think is a pretty cool padlock today is a master lock. And <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> Look at the size of that box versus my hand. It just takes up the whole thing. This is a master lock model. Come on, focus. Focus. Come on, you piece of crap. There we go. Model number 101. Changeable core five pin lock. All right, so let's take a good look at this sucker. I would imagine, I wouldn't imagine exactly, I have no idea what the actual use of this is, but uh, my guess would be to secure a trailer when it is not on a hitch. Um, it would go through the, uh, the locking part, and this part would hang, hang underneath where the... Uh, the ball hitch would go would be my guess, but based off the size of this thing, I don't have a uh, trailer to test this on to try it out. But uh, looks to me like a very nice lock for the application, if that's what it's for. Um, has a five pin key, and um, I didn't pick this up in the store. I picked this up online, and that is a hell of a nice bidding. That's, uh, that's impressive for a master lock. And the whole fact that it's a removable core, we'll find out once we get inside whether or not it's a, a six-pin core or not. But uh, let's see about uh, picking it. It's a really cool, really big lock. All right, so I will use a homebrew tensioner if it'll fit. And it sounds like Ruby's trying to say hi. Tensioner is really, really tight in there. But it does look like it's going to work for us, maybe. Nope, it's going to twist right on out. Let's try a 40,000 spray bar. Yeah, 40,000 fits in there nice. And uh, as big as this thing is, <laughs> I'm actually stretching to hold this. So let me... Adjust the camera down just a little bit more. And as far as picks, um, I got one of Bobby Keys's picks here that I like to use a ton. I need to duplicate it before I break it because uh, I've been using this one a lot. <laughs> and it, you know, never know. Could break any time. Okay, got a little click from one. Let's click from two. Click from three, nothing on four, nothing on five, so back to one, nothing. Another click from two, nothing on three, nothing on four, nothing on five. Back to one. Two feels bound. Okay, that was a click on two, nothing on three. Four is bound now. And then five. So back to one. Nothing, nothing on one. Nothing on two. Nothing on three. Nothing on four. Nothing on five. So I think I overset this. And if I'm guessing right, this thing's clicking like it's got security pins in it too. And it's got a pretty strong spring tension, it feels like, too, on the core. That was two, three, four. 
four, five, and there we go. We're open now. Now that actually uh, put up a pretty good of a fight. And with a bidding like this, uh, it's one master lock you're not going to be raking open. Um, well, I say you're not going to be raking it open, but uh, you never know. Raking is, uh, in my opinion, 99% luck. So masters usually use a weird size 764. And that's not going to fit. We've got a 332nd here. Okay, that fits. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and bring out a pinning tray. And I'm gonna need a follower. Okay, that's supposed to come out. Flung across, bounced off my cabinet, and landed in the floor. All right, so let's dump that out. Looks like it is just a five pin core, so I won't be able to convert this one over to six pins. All right. Let's get zoomed in. Let me scoot my desk back because it is rubbing against the wall and squeaking. Can't handle that much more. All right. So I'll need the key to gut this, and guys, this is a crimped one. You see the crimp there. Most of the time, you can turn it to where the flat spot is right there at the crimp, and you can push it down, and then turn it just a little bit. But since this is a crimped core, I actually won't be able to use a regular follower because it just won't fit in there. But... If you have, I'm told, and I'm not 100% sure because I haven't tried it, but I'm told if you have the Huck kit, the small follower in that one will slide past the crimp. It sure does. Very nice. Thanks for that little bit of info, Bobby Keys. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, dump these keys, key pins out. It's a standard and one, which I'm not surprised that there's standard key pins in this lock at all. This master lock really normally doesn't do security pins on the key pins. But there's the core, nice and shiny and smooth, really sharp edges on this. I mean, it was this thing was clicking like it had security pins in it. So uh, we'll see here in just a second. I'm reaching over there for tweezers, and I got a pair right here. Okay, I've got a standard in one. I've got a standard in two. I've got a standard in three. Okay, where's all that clicking coming from? Okay, so it is all standards, which is surprising versus uh, how it felt to pick. And there's all of our springs. So we've got all standard pins in this lock. So you know what that means. When I see a lock that's got all standard pins, I like to plus it up a little bit. I break out my American Lock Pinning Kit that conveniently has a lock lab sticker on it. <laughs> yeah, guys, I watch Bosnian Bill videos too. <laughs> All right, so let me slide that out of the way. I'm zoomed out as far as I can, so I can work just a little bit. All right, so as far as our drivers, we're gonna go ahead and ditch all of our drivers, except for chambers chamber one that's a really long key pin 
that's a long key pin. That's a long key pin. So yeah, we're going to just ditch these two drivers. Um, and let's put some of those really nice American Locks rated spools in there. Kind of got them mixed up with my uh, serrated drivers. Okay, we got those. Uh, as far as the key pins go, since number one is a very long one, yep. Let's see if a pin this size will fit. Perfect. And I bet this size goes into three. And I bet the same size goes into six. Yep. Okay, so as far as the other pins, I bet chamber two is this size. Nope, it's going to be a size smaller. So chamber two is not going to get security pins because the size smaller than those in the middle there don't take them. And the same thing with uh, chamber four. So neither one of those are going to get uh, security pins. All right, but there we go. We got security key pins and we got a couple of spools in here now. That'll plus this lock up just a little bit, guys. So let's go ahead and call this video finito. You don't need to see me put this back together. Well, you know what? Let's not call it quits yet. Get, give me a second, guys. I'll go ahead and put, reassemble this lock. And um, well, I'll go ahead and pick it again for you. All righty. I've got her put back together. So we'll see about uh, taking her apart again. Well, not taking her apart, but at least picking her. So let me get the camera right back over. Get this big honking thing back into my hand. I wish I had a master lock number three to compare it with. Uh, but I do have something to compare it with. Most of you guys are familiar with the size of an American Lock 700. That's an American Lock 700 behind this thing. So that, that'll tell you how wide this is. Uh, so it is wider and just as tall as a 700. Um, not quite as thick though. But uh, still... I'm fairly impressed with this, considering it did come with a five-pin uh, core. In you know, it does have a uh, boron, boron alloy shackle. So, when Masterlock says they've got a boron alloy shackle, um, I'm pretty well going to believe them because they generally don't skimp on the strength of their locks. It's normally the cores that are just the uh, mushy insides. So let's go ahead and change this or see if we can pick this. I did go ahead and put a spool into chamber three. So let's see what we get. I'll click from one, click from two, click from three, nothing on four, nothing on five. So back to one, a little click, nothing on two, nothing on three, I'll click from four, Click from five, and I'm in a false set now. Nothing on two. Nothing on three. Nothing on four. Nothing on five. So let's go ahead and try again. Nothing on one. Ah, that was two. Nothing on three. That was four. Got my false setback. Nothing on five. Nothing on one. Nothing on two. Nothing on three. And there we go. Open on pin four. Very nice. Uh, upgrades made it a little bit more difficult to pick. So... I'd say this lock is either going to wind up in my collection or wind up in use. We'll see if it fits on the trailer, and if it does, I'll probably wind up giving it to my dad to put on his bass boat trailer because, honestly, 
now. I don't think that's a bad lock. Everybody, please stay safe. Don't do anything illegal. Please like, comment, subscribe. And as always, if you see a lock out there in the wild and you don't have the key for it, don't stick a pick in it.